Welcome back. I'm Jim V. Brock with Maintenance Minute, and in today's episode, we're going to make this really neat three panel changing screen that features etched acrylic. My wife absolutely loves Pinterest. She's always on there looking for really cool projects to try and make, and of course for me to build. That's how our project today gets started. She found this really cool dressing room screen, and she wanted me to build one for her so that she could take it to work. So, I'm going to show you how to build one step by step. Alright, one of the first things I need to do is start laying out some of the material. I'm using uh, some pine material that I have around, some number two pine that I, I bought. Uh, from my favorite box retailer. Um, this was actually Kohl's and since we, I cut it up and manipulate it through the different planers and shapers and different stuff, this works fine for me. So um, number two pine um, from your big box retailer and I am, our screens that we're going to make today are about five foot tall. So I'm going to lay out the first one here by um, take a measure and I'm going to make my mark at five foot and I'm going to cut this off and then we're going to rip these down and start to put together some of the pieces for you. Um, again, you know, safety is always your main concern when you're using uh, power tools. You can lose a finger in just a heartbeat. Um, so always wear your safety glasses and uh, take safety precautions. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is turn the boards that we just cut into inch and a half strips. Um, one of the things, well, first thing I want to do is apologize for all the debris in the background. We have sold this building, and this is probably the last project I'll get to do in here. So we've got a lot of stuff being moved around. Don't normally keep a shop this dirty. Um, I like to have a clean shop because it's way safer. But back to what the project that we're doing today, we're going to uh, take the table saw, and I'm um, setting the fence at an inch and a half strips. So... I'm going to move the fence just a little bit. There, you measure from the front and the back side of the blade, and you measure from the tooth that's pointing, the curved tooth that's pointing towards the rip fence. And so we're going to be pretty good right there. Um, I'm also going to use a push stick because when we go through here, I don't want my thumbs in here. This is a very dangerous thing to do. So I keep push sticks within arm's reach um, to be able to push that through. The next thing you want to do is make sure, you make sure your blade height is set about right. This one is. And normally I have a dust collection system running, but because of this uh, video and the tutorial, it makes too much noise. So we're going to skip that part for right now. But I'm ready to cut those boards. And again, use your safety glasses and keep safety in mind at all times. And as you can tell, that's really all there is to cutting the side strips on this. Now we're going to cut a groove right down through here in just a minute to hold a piece of plywood in place. But this is one of the side styles, um, and so it's going to work out pretty good. Okay, the next phase in our uh, project is to cut a mortise down the length of one of our upright styles. Now this is a test piece that I ran through my router. Uh, just a few minutes ago to make sure that it was right. Um, this is called a mortise, by the way, and later we're going to make a piece called a tenon to put these together when we glue them up. But uh, this is three-quarter inch stock, and if I have this set up right, then my router bit, which is a quarter inch router bit, will go right down the center, and I'll have an equal distance on both sides. I'll have a quarter inch on both sides, making for a nice symmetrical project. So I there you have it. There is your mortise cut in that, that piece. And um, what we'll do is take a piece of quarter inch plywood similar to this a little bit later on, and it will slide tightly and nicely 
right into that groove and be nice and firm. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is have a two and a half inch style in the center of our panel. So I'm going to take the remaining lumber I had off of my one by six that was 10 foot long and I'm going to run it through the table saw. And again, I've got my fence set at two and a half and I got my push sticks close and we're going to run that bar through. Okay, the next thing we gotta do is a little bit of cipher in here. So these are my two styles on the outside edge. You can see we've got the mortises in them. So I laid them side by side. I'm just gonna check them to make sure that they are a total of three inches, and they are. So I've got my style piece here. My total outside diameter, or my total outside dimensions on the, the panel is 16 inches. So I need to subtract the three, which is 13 inches, but I have to prepare for the tenon to be here. And my tenon is going to be a quarter of an inch. So I go to, from 16 inches to 13 inches to 13 inches and a half. So I'm gonna take and measure this out at 13 and a half. And then I'm gonna go over to my chop saw and cut three of them out because I need three of them total. Okay, let's stop here for just a second. This is a radial arm saw. In most of my tutorials, I like to use tools that you can go out and buy at the big box retailers. This is probably not a tool you're gonna to find there. You can find the table saws there for about $150 to $300 or more, depending on the model you wanna get. You can find the router table that I used earlier at the big box retailers too. This though is a little different critter. These were the predecessors to the cutoff saws, or what I call a chop saw, that I used earlier in the video. These are still great tools. I use this one permanently set up to cut my tenons, and I keep it set to where it perfectly matches the mortises that we cut with the router table just a little bit ago. So um, you can find these. These are at auctions and garage sales all day long. I paid about $25 for this one and I've had it for a long time and I really, really like it. So with it, I'm going to make the tenons that go with the mortises. Now you can do your tenons on your table saw just like I'm going to show you here. Um, you can also do your tenons on your router table, but I'm going to use this because I already have it set up and I'm very familiar with it, but there are other ways of doing it. You can also do your tenons with a chisel and a hammer, the way they used to do it in the old days. But, okay, with all of that said, I'm going to now make my tenon. So what I've done with my radial arm saw is I've put a block of 2 before here, and I've clamped it down with a clamp, and it will match the depth I need to fit into the mortise. I've also raised the blade up so that it will come across the work piece and create that male version of the work, which we're going to call the tenon. Now, I have to make several different passes here to clean this out. Um, some of you who are more advanced woodworkers aren't going to like this technique, and all I can do is apologize for it. These tutorials are for beginner users, uh, beginner woodworkers, and this technique works. It's not perfect. It's not as uh, high a level of quality, perhaps, as is some more experienced woodworkers, but that's not what today's tutorial is all about. So now I'm going to cut my tenons on my actual pieces. Okay, so there is our tenon and you can see that it will fit directly inside of our mortise. Okay, the bottom of our panel needs a series of three total pieces of the inch and a half stock that we had done earlier. And again, it will be the 13 and a half inches as what we did before. So we're gonna do three of those um, and get them started as well. And we have to cut the tenons on these too. Now, we also have to have the mortise on these lower pieces 
because the piece of ply that we're going to cut in there will need to be sandwiched on all four sides. So um, we'll need to go back to our center pieces and put a, a second mortise on them. Okay, so back over at the work table, I've taken a pattern. This is off of a library desk that I've built multiple times. Um, so there's no point in reinventing the wheel. So I've taken this uh, scrap piece of plywood. I'm going to make it a template for that I'll be able to keep and not have to redo this again. So I'm simply going to line this up to where um, it fits at the top center of my new template. And I'm going to draw me some lines. i got to make sure I get it straight or everything's going to be crooked. And the best way to do that, of course, is to use a tape measure. That's right at a half inch. Come up just a skosh. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to draw these lines. And I'm not going to put these little whoop de doos on there. I'm just going to go to the bottom. And then trace my curve just to the bottom of that. And then I'll freehand it from there. Okay, so I can set this aside. And then I'm going to take my square and just connect those lines right across like that. Now I can slick this up a little bit if I wanted to a little bit later, but that gives me a good pattern that I'll be able to cut out and, and use so that all of the tops are symmetrical. So this is the next piece we're going to start to cut. Okay, I'm now ready to cut out my template. I have clamped it to my table. I've made sure i got plenty of space on the back side so I don't actually cut into my table with my jigsaw. Now you could use a scroll saw for this or you could use a band saw for this. Um, or you could even take your time and use a coping saw and do it by hand if you wanted to. I'm going to use my trusty old jigsaw. I've had this thing for probably 30 years and it always works real good for me. Um, I like templates because I don't like to have to redo things all of the time. So I will cut this out and then I will keep it after this project in case I want to make some more of these panels later. Okay, there you go. I'll take my sander and clean this edge up a little bit so it's nice and neat. And um, guys, if, uh, if you want to, uh, I guess you could email me and I'll provide you with this template, but it's pretty easy. You just freehand it and go from there. But I see a little, little spot I'm not comfortable with, so I'm going to sand it off and um, make it look a little better. Okay, the next thing we'll do is take the pattern we just cut out and got slicked up. And I didn't mention that this is 13 and a half inches, just like the other pieces, because we've got to put the tenons on it as well. So um, we're going to take, this is a one by eight, which is actually seven and a quarter inches. And we're going to mark off our pattern here. And then we'll be, cut these out individually. So we need three of these because we're doing three panels for this particular setup. And don't forget if you do what I'm doing right here, you got to leave the space for the blade width so you can't butt that up exactly um, up to the next cut and over because you gotta leave that little space for my blade width just a little tip there you'll end up with a piece that's short if you do that and you gotta do the same thing here because um, you end up again short and that's that's always frustrating and not to mention that you know materials are so expensive these days so you want to not make too many mistakes if you can help it but you can see the benefit of the pattern right here with what I'm doing is that I don't have to reinvent my curve every time I have three that are the same. Okay, as you can see, I've got my pieces clamped up to cut out with my jigsaw. Now I want to point out that I went ahead and did my tenons on here because it's way easier to cut them when I have a flat face here to be able to put up against the fence to work. You don't want that walking and riveling around that way. So I pre-cut my tenons on this piece. Um, and it'll just work out a little bit easier. So that's a good tip. For you. I'm going to take my jigsaw, cut these out, and um, then we'll move on to the next phase. Okay, as you can tell, I've done a dry fitting on our project today. These are our dressing screen panels. Um, in the lower half down here, we're going to put a piece of plywood, quarter inch plywood. That's what the mortises were for. And um, I did not show you this, but I need, we need to put mortises in your centerpiece here. I did not show you that. So if you haven't done that, then you need to back up and do that. Now, 
Um, as the course of the day has gone on, my wife has called a time or two and we have changed this. She wants a um, acrylic panel in the uh, in the top here. So that means I'm gonna have to back up and also put a mortise in the top piece too. Um, so the design is changing throughout the day as we go, but uh, we're still moving in the right direction towards the end, I hope. Okay, now we're ready to cut the panels. Um, they are 24, uh, 23 and a half inches. Uh, wide already, which is what we needed, and then we have to compensate for the 13 and a half inches again that we cut the mortises for. So I've set my fence there at 13 and a half, and we're going to run these panels through so that we have the ability uh, to the screen. Okay, I have my quarter inch acrylic sheets set up and ready to cut, just like we did the plywood panels, but I have to stop here. Cutting acrylic is dangerous. It can splinter and it can shatter um, a lot like glass can, and it sends these really sharp plastic pieces, you know, all up and down your arms and stuff. So please wear your safety goggles and things like that. Um, hopefully I can get three pieces cut without um, them busting. So here we go. Okay, I'm doing my final dry fitting of our dressing room screen. Now, um, I feel like I need to point something out. This being acrylic uh, and calling it a dressing room screen seems a bit odd. Um, this is in response to the COVID-19 um, pandemic that everybody's been uh, worried about for a little bit. Um, my wife is making a divider uh, at her cubicle uh, at the request of her boss. So um, that's what this is about. It's so people can see through and see that she's in there and still communicate with her, but yet providing some protection for her while she is at work as the country starts to open back up from that situation. Um, as far as a tutorial or a video goes, um, you could either put another panel in like this up here, or um, the, the photograph that we're building these off of has a grid pattern in here and actually chicken wire behind it um, and it's being used as a, a display to hang things on. So you can modify the design of this however you want to. The construction principles are going to be the same. Um, I thought I'd need to explain that as we call in this a dressing room screen and it has clear <laughs> acrylic in it um, because it's just a bit odd. But that, that's what it's all about. So I'm doing my final dry fitting here. Um, and as you can tell, uh, as I start to clamp this up, this one piece doesn't want to fit quite right. So I have to take it back apart and see what's what's going on here. Um, most likely, uh, the uh, because I can't move this panel either. You want this panel to be loose in there. You don't want this to be tight. You're not going to glue this panel in because you want it to be able to expand and contract. So, so that's a mistake a lot of people make. They'll try to glue this panel in. You're going to glue it in at the points here and here and here but you want the panel itself to float and i know you can't see it on the video but you know th this acrylic panel is free to float so i got to figure out what's going on here what's binding i'll fix that then we'll be ready to glue this back together so let me figure that out and i'll be right back okay i think i have all my issues resolved so it's now time to start gluing this up i'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up and again remember we don't want to put any glue in our mortison trough here um, i've got my starter marks already put on here you want to keep a level close by, or I mean, pardon me, a, a square close by, and you're going to put glue on all of these surfaces, and you want enough of it to where uh, when you put the clamps on there, it squeezes out just a little bit. Not too much, because that would be wasteful, but just enough that it squeezes out. That tells you that you had enough on there when you did it, and it will stick very um, very quickly. This glue sets up in about 10 minutes. So um, I always get a little stressed out 
when I'm doing this and if I can have some help sometimes um, it works a lot better because sometimes these pieces just don't want to cooperate with you and this may be one of those those times once you get them started they tend to want to do a lot better sometimes you gotta hold your mouth just right as my mom used to say get some of this stuff to, to work there it popped in Right. And you'll square it up here in a minute. So what you want to do is just get your clamps on as quickly as possible. Get to your line. Okay. And we're going to move on up the way. Glue the center piece. And again, you want to have a liberal amount, just enough to where it squeezes out. But not so much that it's just a gooey mess. And I did put some markers on here to help me remember, you know, where what piece was. So you'll see an X right there telling me that this one's here on this side. And if you'll recall, I had to do a little tweaking to get that um, all put together nice and tight. So that's going to go in there. Boom. There it went. All right. And then we grab the acrylic and we'll just slide it down in place. And again, you know, nice and loose. And then we'll grab the top piece. And this is where the mortise and tendons really show how strong they are. Once you glue this together, the wood will break long before the glue will. And, you know, this will last a good long time. She won't use it that long because it's a temporary thing. But if you're building something for your home, you know, you build it this way, it'll last... 50 60 years before it needs any maintenance most likely unless you know somebody attacks it <laughs> something like that and we'll just slide this in the last minute there and it'll go in kind of like it's supposed to tighten it up just a little bit i can see i'm off out of square just a touch so we're gonna put a piece check it and place her two. No, actually, it's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and get this clamp on there. And like I said, it only takes about 10 minutes and this glue is set up. You want it nice and tight, but not so tight that it bows. And don't worry about it if it's not perfectly. Uh, flush across the top there because you are going to sand this later and of course this is fine this sands very very easily looks like it went in there pretty good i'm going to let this sit up for about 10 minutes and then um, i'll take it out of the clamps um, and we'll wait about an hour probably before we fully install the three pieces together with the hinges but uh, and then then we'll leave it take it back apart and let, let renee paint it Okay, about an hour has passed, and I have taken the panels out of the glue clamps now, and we're really ready to finish this project up. I'm going to get my sander out, and I'm going to clean up these edges a little bit, and just kind of um, clean it up a little bit. She wants a rough finish, because she's going to distress this, so I'm not going to get real carried away with the sanding, but I'm just not completely pleased with the way some of these joints have fit up, so I'm going to smooth them up, um, and then I'll turn this over to her for some painting. So... Anyway, we'll get started with it. Okay, you can see I've got all three panels are done. They've been sanded. We're gonna clean these up real good. Then we're gonna take them to a dust-free environment and paint them and put them for their final assembly. And I'll show you what that looks like after it's done. Now that we're in a dust-free environment, we have placed several coats of gray paint on our project as a base coat and have allowed it to dry. Next, Renee uses a lime wash glazing paint to create the distressed look on the changing screen. The lime wash glazing is available at your favorite craft store or in the paint department of your favorite big box retailer. While that is drying, she artistically creates the design for the acrylic panels using her Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutter. The vinyl cutter makes it easier to reproduce multiple matching designs. 
she uses a sharp tool to remove the unwanted vinyl from the design in a process called weeding. After she has placed the design onto the acrylic, she must remove any unwanted wrinkles and air pockets from the vinyl decal. She uses a stiff, flat blade to maneuver the unwanted air pockets out of the decal. The project is now moved to a very well ventilated area and the etching spray paint is applied. Allowing each coat to dry, the process is repeated four to five times. Once the etching paint has cured, the vinyl decal is removed and the project is ready to use.